This episode of The Libby O Show is brought to you by Sweet 501 and Integrated Production Solutions. Hi, I'm Johnny Keefe, and you're watching The Libby O Show. How did she do it? Do it. What's up, everybody? Livio here with The Livio Show. Today, we have a special episode featuring my friend and drummer from Boys Not Girls, Mr. John Keefe. How's Hi. it going? It's going. It going is great? going. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. How are you? I'm pretty good. I'm a little sore oh. um, from going to the gym a lot. Yeah. Doing a lot of that. Love a lot it. Of, a lot of Brazilian jiu-jitsu right down the street. They just opened a... Um, my coach from uh, L.A., this guy, Sean Williams, just opened a Henzo Gracie Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu school in Brentwood. Awesome. So I was over there rushing to get over here. Okay. Well, glad you made it. I did. Honored I ma you made it. In one piece, too. Yes, Barely. for sure. <laughs> I almost got hit like 900 times. I drove yeah. I drove 95. You Well, I, I was I driving never, I drive 65 really here. People were getting in my lane. Yeah. Like, not. I think people have lost a sense of how to drive during 2020 yeah. because we've been cooped up. Yeah. I. So there's the, um, what is it, the, the HOV lane? Right. So I didn't know that it's only from, like, 4 to 6 until today. Oh. And then I read the sign, and I was like, oh, sick. Let's see no. what this baby can do. Let's use this to our yeah. advantage. Yeah. Yes. So, um, yeah, I've been I've been really, really good, really active, even though every the country's kind of been shut down and then not shut down, and then I think it's going to shut down again or something. Um, but it really hasn't really changed my life at all. I mean, it actually probably made me a better human. I'm, like, yeah. actively more healthy. Um, not that I wasn't healthy before, but I'm just like outside building things. And um, I took up like woodworking. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. And love it. And um, I like redid my backyard and took out the old axe and the old hammer and I started clearing stuff. Um, I bought this like little piece of land next to me. Um, so I've been digging up stumps and, you know, clearing trees and. Good, nice nature cleanse. Yeah. Well, I guess yeah. allegedly. So <laughs> allegedly, allegedly, um, the like vitamin D is obviously really good for you. But right. they were saying, I, I was re reading and I've heard that it's really good for um, the COVID stuff. So thankfully, I haven't experienced it yet. But... I've been outside, so. I also believe, like, your mental health, though, is a huge part of it. Like, yeah. if you can keep that and your physical yeah. health, like, balance together, which, yeah. I mean, balance is, I don't know, like, how, yes. how often you can keep balance in life. I would completely agree. But, I don't have any balance. I have to, like, be fucking balls to the wall with a new project every other week. Otherwise, I'll go crazy. That I guess maybe that's my balance. I yeah. can't sit still. I have to be yeah. doing things. Otherwise, like, mentally, I'll just, like, lose it. I will say, though, the thing that I noticed about you is you have really great discipline, That's, which yeah. I respect. It took me a long time, a yeah. long time um, to get there um, just because I'm, like, creative, very creative. So yeah. it's, like, when you're really creative, it's hard to, like, be disciplined. But um, so, like, since we're not... You know, the band and stuff isn't really doing anything. We haven't really done much anyways in the last couple of years. Um, I've had to find other outlets, um, that being, um, you know, wrestling and teaching. I mm -hmm. teach Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and I'm, like, way into that. That's been, like, my focus over the last couple of years, amongst other things. Um, and, yeah, so my balance, I guess, is just making sure that I'm present and I have to get up and go to the gym and make that's, and I also love it. So that, yeah. that helps because, um, if you don't love it, going to the gym, it, 
absolutely sucks, you know? So um, just having a some sort of thing that I do every day. Um, it started actually with like, did you ever hear about, I don't, I don't remember who said it, but like if you get up and you make your bed, right? It sets the tone for the day, no joke. I don't make my yeah. bed, but <laughs> no, I did that though because I, I was so all over the place. Like, I, you know, yeah. being on the road and stuff for so long, you just like get in this like zone of you're driving to another place. You slept like shit. You're out, you know. All hours, you know, yeah. drinking and partying, and then you're sleeping that off, and then you have sound check at three, and then you're sitting in a, you know, an arena like um, crack house, crack den in the back with like the crack lighting, like a hockey arena. Right. That's, and you just like, you go crazy. So I have to have things. Okay. So, uh, yeah, ba- balance is important, but I guess everybody's balance is a little bit different, and I think, um, yeah, getting up and starting there, making your bed, helps. It does. And I still try to make my bed, obviously. But but having yeah. some sort of structure. Because even, like, for me, I'm used to going into an office. And then that stopped this year because of freelance. And then COVID happened. And so having something each day where I'm yeah. not just kind of, like, waking up and going, oh, what am I going to do today? Yeah. You have to get real f-ing creative. Really creative. <laughs> you do. You have to get yeah. creative. But it's this has been, a, like, some people are like, oh, it's the worst time ever. What am I going to do? I'm going to have to sit <laughs> Like watch TV all day. I'm like, dude, I like I canceled my cable. I literally canceled my cable. I'm like, I'm not. I mean, this was like two weeks ago, but I'm like, I don't watch yeah. it anyway. So like, there's way because there's there's all this shit to do. Like I'm up at like six and I'm like outside and I'm like I gotta do Love all that. this. Shit. And then like last night I was like I have to finish this land and it's just like it's a lot of fucking work. Like. I took out a stump the other day that was probably, I mean, God damn. It was, it, it was the size of like half my, my truck. Okay. That's and like, massive. I took, like this tree, it fall, right. like this big old tree. And so I'm like, how am I going to do this? But, you know, YouTube and I figured it out and I got my chainsaw and an ax and, and I got it done. Um, but yeah, so I'm like up early and I'm, doing all my shit, going to the gym, and then <laughs> yesterday yeah. I have, the, like, the light on my head. I bought one of those where <laughs> I could work outside because I was just, like... And then so Gabby can find you if she lost you. She'll just see the yeah. light. Yeah. She's like, yeah. What, what are you doing? <laughs> She's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Why? She's like, I see you less now that there's COVID because you're just outside, like, outside all day till the night. I built I built a shed, which was pretty wild. Look at you. Yeah. The inner woodsman. I was like, Shit, I have all these tools, and the garage is just getting too cluttered. So I went on uh, YouTube and figured out how to build a shed and then bought more tools, and now that is too small. So then I was like, I'm not building a fucking big shed. So I, right. I bought one. I, yeah. got a, I got a placement in a TV thing. So I was like, cool. So I bought a shed, but I still have to clear this sort of land. And then I found a sewer, which was pretty wild. I haven't opened it yet, but... But maybe one day. Yeah, I don't know. And then I found a lot of, like, old Doritos bags when I was clearing the stuff. Um, I love Doritos. They could have been mine. A bunch of nails. haven't stepped in one yet, thankfully. Um, Yeah, so... Love it. I got a lot of shit going on. A lot going on. It sounds like you've self-taught a lot of it. What do you... Has that been the trajectory for, you know, most everything that you're involved in, like, with drum... Like... Well, drumming with, and with drumming, I with drumming I I picked up a pair of drumsticks my dad had gotten as a gag gift um, for <laughs> Christmas and they yeah. were like this big and I still have them in my house I actually just found them and brought them to Nashville they're literally like this big now a normal size is probably like this big but uh-huh. they're like this big and um, it was just like eighties sort of like rock drumming sort of gag gift with this little like rubber pad. For you to practice on and I saw them and I was like oh okay like I gotta take these and then I just like and was could Went not stop it. yeah but I wanted to sign up I remember when I was in fifth grade they had like the band instructor who I'm still pretty close with Mr. Conti he uh came in with the snare drum and like the tuba and yeah you know 
all that stuff, and he hit the snare drum, and I was like, bing! Like, that was That's it. That's it. That was yeah. it. And I was f***ing addicted, and I could not stop. And um, But I didn't get to go get the snare drum at first because we didn't have any f***ing money. My parents were like, no, no. Like, we don't. It's, and then I realized, like, growing up, I'm like, it was $45 a month. <laughs> like, how f***ing poor are we? Right. But we were pretty f***ing poor, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. So then but you I don't know what hooked. you don't have, though, if you're not I had no idea. It, you like, know? I didn't have... You know, I don't remember ever getting new clothes up until, like, I could buy them. We went to Savers, which uh, which is, like, um, Goodwill, yeah. essentially, or St. Vincent's down the street. Yeah, I got all my clothes there. But now that's, like, all the rage. Everybody's getting all the used shit. All the vintage. Yeah. All the everything. Yeah. 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 So mm-hmm. I refuse to buy vintage stuff now. I just buy new stuff. <laughs> just I'm just kidding. Fresh. Yes. No, my boots are used. I, I love shoes. And Gabby so. sells vintage clothes. So, yes, she I mean. Does. Valley Girl. Is it Valley Girls? or I can't remember. Valley Girl Vintage. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Go look it up. Yeah. Yeah. It's really look great. It up. On the way. Yeah. On Online, everywhere, Instagram. Yeah. She's got a hell of a little business there. It's, yeah. it's, it's been a lot of. Um, digging for things um but she's got a really good eye for it and people seem to take to it so she's been on 12 south um, friday saturday and sunday uh selling in like a booth sort of thing which Mm -hmm. has been really cool so yeah yeah so being around someone that obviously has started their own thing and then you obviously kind of paving your way and choosing Mm -hmm. your path and finding interest that, that that you enjoy yeah what do you think is so great about Allowing yourself to continue to learn in life and Um, having appreciation for always learning and developing yourself. Well, the amazing thing about martial arts, and I've always been kind of uh, actively into it, whether I'm like watching fights. My brother is a, um, he does boxing and he's like a very, very high level boxing coach and has had Olympians and stuff like that. So I've been around that and he's very regimented in in that and i think having the creative aspect that you have in like something like brazilian jiu-jitsu or wrestling where it's always evolving and it's always changing and the problem solving yeah has allowed me to like take that that's why i need to do that before i do things in the during the day if i can if i can get through like someone strangling me or like trying to break my arm off the rest of the day is a Cakewalk. So this is a great interview because yeah. you were able to fit that in before this. I had to. <laughs> yeah. I had to. And it's super important. Um, and it allows me to like, it It like, op- it like opens up your mind, you know, I mean, without yeah. f-ing opening up your mind, you know. I want to speak to that really quickly because I think in general, you know, we're in a society where we're either medicating through whatever yeah, alcohol, or we're medicating through our phones, yeah. distractions. So I want to hear your thoughts on that. So going to something that's healthy. Okay. Uh, the phone. Let's talk about the phone. Let's talk about the I phone. I f- hate the phone, and I barely let's, know how to use it. Yeah. Like, I I don't look at it um, that much as uh, I used to. But you know how you can check your screen time? Yeah. So during when this, this COVID... Uh, stuff started and I started going outside and doing all these projects, I would lose my phone. I lose my phone all the time. And I had, you know, like the tile thing, but I had yeah. it just like sat in my drawer. <laughs> but I'd lose my phone and I'd get all pissed off. And eventually I just kept losing it enough where I just was like, whatever. And I would just be outside. So then I just didn't use my phone. Like literally wouldn't go on it for days because I would lose it. It would be outside like under sticks or something like that and find it. And I was like, whatever, there's nothing going on anyway. It's just people complaining whether this is real or this is fake or I hate this guy and this guy's a racist and this guy's a piece of shit and fuck him and blah, blah, blah. So I was like, I don't really want to see this shit anyway. So like, and I'm happy. I'm, I was like, man, I'm the happiest I've ever been. And I wonder why. So, um, yeah, I think the phone really sucks and it sucks the life out of people. We do need it, and it should, like, because of the times we live in, yeah. it's good to have. But it's like, I've thought about, like, getting a fucking flip phone. I don't know how to use it anyway. Well, they have. I saw where there is a phone you can buy. Honestly, it doesn't even really look like a real phone just because it's just so ridiculous how they made it. But it's like a clear, it's a, literally a clear 
like a square really? about the size of the iPad, maybe smaller. Yeah. And it just has the numbers on it. And you, it's like a calculator, honestly. Huh. And you take it with you when you are running errands and then you leave your smartphone at home. Oh, that's kind of cool. But I can't remember what it's called. Yeah, I just, it's just overwhelming. And it, it's like a, it's a, like if I'm looking at my phone before bed, I won't fall asleep. Yeah. And I've been like, I try actively not to do that. But sometimes we get stuck. And I found myself recently, you know, over the last, you know, couple weeks, I'm looking at it a little bit more. I'm like, man, like, where's the f-ing time going? You know, where is it going? And I'm like, I don't have enough time to do stuff. So I try to like, I try not to use it as much. And like, yeah, unless I kind of have to. I mean, it's I mean, the world we live in, you, you have to. You, you have, have to, to be able to answer emails and like, you know, people are trying to get a hold of me and like, but then again, there's like not a hell of a lot going on. Like my industry, excuse me, um, doing film and TV, writing yeah. songs that is kind of shut down because they're not shooting commercials. Right. I mean, they are, but they're few and far between. And it's like I do uh, sync music, synchronization music for uh, it's basically uh, elevator music, but for commercials. But I do, like, rock and roll and, like, cool stuff. So, like, if a brand, for example, wants to use, uh, like, a Foo Fighters song, right? Mm-hmm. But they don't want to pay, you know, a million bucks to use, you know, My Hero by the Foo Fighters. I'll have a song that maybe it sounds sort of like the Foo Fighters and then... Melodically the same, but... Well, maybe. Yeah. Not, I mean, not necessarily, like, the same sort of, like, vibe. Because okay. it's all about the vibe for a commercial or, like, like, like keywords, you know, like... Mm-hmm. The, uh, like, if you're doing, like, something for home goods, you do, like, it brings you home. You know, that sort of thing. Right. But the problem is, is, like, the market got so oversaturated because everybody figured out what we were doing... And then it got small that it's, like, impossible to get a commercial right now. So it's, like, I went from having, like, five commercials a week, like, a couple years ago to, like, I don't even fucking, I don't even know. I'm, like, okay. So, like, like, what do I do? You just never know. Yeah, like, I hit up yeah. the, the president of, um, of Sony, Brian Monaco, and I was, like, hey, what are you guys looking for right now? And he's, like, <laughs> well, he's, like, I guess the same stuff that we're always sort of looking for, but they're not really... They're not really shooting much, so it's mm-hmm. kind of like we're kind of at a standstill. So it's been kind of rough in that in that uh, respect. But you know, thankfully, I've been s- relatively smart with uh, my finances, and I don't live in like the craziest, biggest house ever, and like have an overhead that's so high that I can't you know afford to do the things I want to do, and you know, you pace yourself over time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, this time has definitely made me more self con like aware, self conscious, uh, self aware of like what I'm doing, you know, mm-hmm. which is kind of cool, and what I can do and what I can learn, and it's like, man, like we actually have like a lot of time in the day if we yeah. use it. There's, but I don't have enough time now because <laughs> <laughs> you create all these like, projects wait, for yourself. Yeah, yeah, which is fun. Like I'm like, Fuck, I got so many things to do, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. it's just, you know, how many people have access to you, I think is one thing. And then it's yeah. how much do you spend your time scrolling their phone, watching TV, read, like, how can the you create is a, a day? TV life suck at the end of the night because yeah. you'll sit there and watch for hours. And, like, we just watched The Queen's Gambit. Have you seen that? No, but it uh, sounds amazing. It's awesome. Chess. It's, like, about this, like, chess wizard. Yeah. Really, really cool. But then I find myself, like, falling asleep at 2. And then I'm not, like, waking up at 7. You know, like I want to be, wa- I want to wake yeah. up when the sun's coming up because I can get the most enjoyment out of the day. And now the sun is, the sun is uh, setting uh, earlier. Yeah, like which really, which is sucks. Pro- it's about to be soon. Like it's probably yeah, gonna set yeah, soon. it sets at f- <laughs> like four forty, and I'm like, <laughs> like I have like a bunch of stumps and like sticks in my pickup <laughs> truck that I need to bring to the place. <laughs> and yeah. like I'm like, when am I gonna do that? Um, so yeah, yeah, so I mean the struggle. Um, I want to talk about boys like girls for a second. Okay. Obviously. Sure. Um, you moved your Asia tour. Yep. And uh, Australia tour to next year. Yep. 2021. Yep. I want to talk about your fan base a little bit. Like, yeah. what has it been like interacting them with them now, but then maybe those that have been with you the entire time, like looking back on. So it's different here than it is overseas. Cause yeah. like 
here, I feel like they get our like people get our music right away. But overseas, it's like it's there's a little bit of lag in some yeah. places. And then they're just fans for like ever. Like these people are just fans for ever. <clears throat> Especially in Asia, it's crazy. They're like amazing. They're amazing. Not all the fans are amazing, but 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 they're dedicated. They, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. It yeah. just seems like they're a little bit more like, like invested. Yeah, I, yeah. like because we we sold out some of those dates and like there was like one or two that sold out in like a minute. I'm like, who the f- who the fuck are we? Or am I Taylor Swift? <laughs> you know, who am I? Who am I? Um. So, yeah, we uh, we had to postpone. It it sucked because we were, like, all, like, yes. Like, we're ready. ready. To go. Martin's got his, the night game band that he's been doing. Paul's been doing um, uh, country music and been really sort of uh, successful. And that's kind of, I think, how our our interaction hap- happened because yeah. uh, you're friends with LJ. Mm-hmm. And Paul was working with LJ and then... Gabby started taking photos. And then now we're just all. And now we're here. And then we saw each other in the voting and line. And this is it. <laughs> this is where we're at. And this is where it This ends. is how it happened. Um, <laughs> so we're going to close the circle here today. <laughs> and say just, goodbye. No one else is allowed. Okay. Yeah, yes. So <laughs> no more access. There's no more people. Um, yeah. So the the tour is postponed. And um, yeah, I, I guess we'll do it next year. You know? Yeah. Is there something about touring that you didn't know that you loved that maybe you're really looking forward to next year? Um, I know that I dislike it more now yeah. that I'm older um, because flying, like every time I fly now, I'm like my body like retains all this water and my feet will like swell up and shit and it makes me feel kind of shitty and then my sleep gets all fucked up. Yeah. And when that happens, like I don't feel great and then I'm not like doing my normal routine. So it takes me a minute. But then again, I haven't really toured and quite a while so i'm sure it's always fun because you know paul when and you get there it's getting there yeah paul, yeah paul and martin are like my, my best friends and we're not the same guys like you know we're not like the party animals we were when we were in like our 20s mm-hmm. you know that's i don't even like when i see pictures and like watch interviews or like i was watching our dvd because gabby had never seen it and i was like i like Got choked up because I'm like, I don't know who the fuck that guy is, but I do remember that. Yeah. But, like, even the way I am and the way I talk, and I'm like, man, I would fucking just beat the shit out of myself. <laughs> like, what are you doing, you asshole? Like, what are you, what is, what are you doing? Wait, what year was this from, the DVD? Like, uh, was this it- was, like, 2009. Okay. I think, yeah. And it's cool, and, like, I'm, like, a good guy, I think, but... I don't know. Just I, I'm just like, what, what is you going change, on? I feel like though you even changed so much, and I mean, I'm, I'm, in, I'm not even thirty yet. I have one year till thirty, but like, in the last four years, like in your twenties, it's just a lot. You're just all over the place until yeah. you get settled. Yeah. Well, this is an amazing time for you that you're starting, you yeah. know, to do this stuff now because, you know, this is the frame. This can be part of the framework for your sort of future, or not, or you can yeah. realize, wow, I really don't like this and I suck at it and I want to I want to work kidding. at a laundromat who knows but it's at least you're doing something right. there's a lot of people that you know through this like I was saying is just like sitting on their couches and getting fat and I've seen so many of them because they're scared and like that's that's valid totally yeah. valid I get it but at some point you know I would think that you got to do something you know, yeah, fear can't run your life. Or like play video games or something, you know. But there's a lot of that. Um, so, yeah, yeah. So no, knowing, uh, yeah, so knowing that guy versus now is just like pretty wild. And the the touring, yeah, I don't know. I think we'll have a blast because we all hang out still all the time anyway. Like we talk to each other every day. I'm at Paul's like at least once a week for football, and then when Martin's not like. You know, in, in his studio. Winnebago or whatever he's doing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When he's not doing that. When he's not hippified. Yeah. He's which in, is so yeah. weird. He's like, yeah. a, I don't know what you'd call what's going on there. It's like country, country meets like. A uh, little bit of 80s. 80s. Yeah. I don't know what you'd call that. It's like a top hat with like. 
disco and then like track suits. Like I look like I'm from Pawtucket, Rhode Island, and I sell <laughs> Oxycontin or something. You know, like, that's amazing. You know, yeah. No, like, you- I'm not sure where 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 it is, but yeah. Is it, do you love that all, you all three have something going that's completely different? Than I'm the, the only one that? that has anything that's going on that's good. I mean, everybody else kind of sucks. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> now, those guys, are, those guys are so f-ing talented and um, successful at what they do. And yeah. they're, they're really good. They're really driven. And, you know, it's very rare to see... Um, bands, spe- I mean, probably from all eras, but I know at least in my era, uh, in the in the bands that we were surrounded with, like continue on a musical path mm-hmm. where all the members are still actively doing music, even the members that aren't you know with us anymore, um, like have left the band yeah. or you know we we um, we had to get rid of or or whatever. Um, everybody is still active in music and doing well in music, which is kind of amazing that you know you got a group of guys from boston that are still doing that and you know relatively successful i mean yeah really successful like paul paul's had like a bunch of number ones in country and it's like where the he's from lemonster mass like it couldn't be less country it's like almost (laughs) like like this it's almost like the city you know he's probably never picked up a shovel in his life you know (laughs) but but he's here but he knows how to produce country songs and he's really good at it and then you know martin's been a, an amazing songwriter and producer for a long time and i just happened to fall into commercials because i didn't realize that's how i was writing songs anyways you know i was gonna ask you that that that's that, so that's how you fell into you kind of fell into sync it sounds yeah like. yeah okay. i i uh just basically like boys like girls was kind of off the road and i was working at my then um my my partner uh, Morgan at, at the time. And we, we started, um, we started this band and that brand band turned, turned into this like 10 person folk band sort of thing. But the songs were super syncable. And I, I don't remember how it just like organically happened. And then we were in LA yeah. and then we were like meeting with, you know, a bunch of different, um, like publishers and stuff like that. And, our, my longtime manager, um, Brett, was like, he's, he always sounds like he's high. It's really, he's like, what's up, dude? Um, he's like, yeah, this is great for filming TV. But I didn't know really what that meant. And then, you yeah. know, people would send us examples. And then we just had this little, like, sort of home studio. And then next thing you know, we have uh, some mega ads. We had, like, a couple Super Bowl spots and... Mm-hmm. Actually, one of the Super Bowl. That's how I partly moved to Nashville. We came here to shoot um, the four by four ever campaign for the Super Bowl. Love it. Yeah. So we came out here and we we're in like this big studio, and I don't remember what studio. It actually, might have been at Sony. Yeah, I think it was at Sony, and um, we were in Nashville, and uh, yeah. So, mm. so. Uh, yeah, we started getting a bunch of commercials, and then that became kind of the, the red and butter. And then um, me and Morgan split, like, because he still lives in, in L.A., and uh, I moved here for, like, a year with Gabby. I was like, yeah, we're moving. Like, let's go. Yeah. You know, they didn't have anybody doing the sync thing sort of, like, in Nashville, and um, I was like, well, f- it, I'll do it. You know, they are like, hey, do you, let's you, go. You, you want to do this? And we did our first, like, Sony Sync Camp in Nashville. And and then um, I kind of traveled around for a minute. Uh, bought this really big house and lived there for six months and was like, fuck this. This isn't for me. It was like a, look at me, I made it house. Yeah. And uh, we didn't use it, and I was... a uh, just kind of unhappy and we moved back to my farm for like a couple months during the winter great timing mm. no heat i was gonna Chopping say i was like outside. literally yeah yeah that kind of thing wood stove um and then we found the house that we live in now which is completely eclectic and weird to our personalities <laughs> kind of artsy it um, is very artsy it's definitely y'all's different. wallpaper choice i've got to say is like yeah. Yeah, you just yeah. never know where you're going to walk into next, whether it's like a 70s cocaine bathroom or a, 
you know. Or just, a, like, yeah. It, it's really bizarre. Well, There's, even like, like, every room well, is very, the very sh- different. <laughs> the shoot that me and Gabby did, I was like, this is literally the perfect, we didn't have to move anything. Yeah, there's, like, yeah. different little, like, sections. I was like, we were like, yeah, like, let's make this, like, a Las vegas sort of bathroom. And, like, let's make this bathroom, like, sort of like Miami Vice. And, yeah. you know, we kind of, like, came uh, came together on some stuff. Um, cool. Yeah, so... So how did you meet Paul and Martin initially? Okay. So like, and this is like really going way back, but like, yeah. Um, I met Martin through my friend, my longtime friend, Brent Mulligan. Um, and Brent lived the town over from me in Norton, Massachusetts. And we used to do, um, these little like shows, like when we were kids, um, like 14, 15, 16, maybe even younger than that. And we put on these like, local shows at like vfws and stuff like that which i don't think people do anymore and like it was awesome we would have like you know hundreds of kids would come through and we would play shows and me and brent would go to this wings place in norton mass called wendell's which is like a total hole and but it's like they have like the best wings ever and they've like won awards and all this so we started hanging out and brent's uh, singer of his band quit. So when he quit, Brent found Martin okay. somehow, right? And then my band and Brent's band with now Martin Singer went on a tour and me and Martin became really close. We would like um, hang out a ton and, and when our bands got off tour, we were like, we should um, we should start a band together, um, but it's a little fucking weird because of the politics involved. But I was like, you know what though? Like I put the f- time into my playing, and I know where I'm at versus the local level versus like the world mm-hmm. level. I think I do. Like I really fucking know my shit when it comes to drums. Um, and you want to be able to put that somewhere. You don't want to. Yeah, 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 and. I didn't feel like the other bands had anybody, and this is going to sound cocky, I felt like I was far better than all of them as a, as a player. And I, and I didn't feel like I had that same dedication and commitment from band members that I was, you know, the band I was in. Yeah. I felt like people were, you know, getting f***ed up, or they just wouldn't show up on time, or whatever it was, you know. Mm-hmm. And I was like doing everything that's how it that and then obviously you know the the playing aspect and i thought martin was of that same sort of like let's let's go let's do it not that brent wasn't now brent's a super go-getter and so were his bandmates some of them but like the there's like there's like the the level of like like I don't want. I don't want to say world class musicianship versus like local level versus. I'm gonna also work fucking hard. Yeah. Because you could have a guy that's like sort of me- mediocre, but works really hard, and he can get up to that level because you see it all the time. That's like Nashville's filled with that. Right. right. They show up. They get a good attitude, and they play the part, and they're a very very good hired gun. You see it all the time, and that's awesome. Yeah. I felt. I didn't know that, number one, because I didn't live in Nashville. And this was like, this guy is the best guy by far that I've seen. He's the best guy. He's the most driven. He's been young, and he's he's been good. And I'm friends with him, and this is uncomfortable because I'm also friends with my f- friend Brent. I don't want to poach, but if he quits and he asks me, what am I to say? Right. Right? And he did. He quit. And that was, I didn't ask him to quit. Whatever he quit quit the band. And he goes, I want to be in a band with you, and I said, Well, we'll mm-hmm. see. I said, Well, I, I would like that too. And he's like, But it can't be the band you know you're in. So we started a band called Lancaster, and Lancaster was um, me, a uh, couple of the guys from my band. We were maybe trying yeah. out, and then we lived in this like shitty apartment in Taunton, Massachusetts, and our our first bass player moved in. Um, 
Brian, who I th- he, I just actually I hadn't seen him in years. I ran into him at Lowe's, which was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, Brian, I haven't seen you in ten years. You know, That's since since you know whatever. So uh, so Paul came into the picture because in the midst of like the band sort of transitioning, uh, I was doing a folky sort of project with this kid, Brian Hover. And he had a guitar player. He said, oh, this kid's awesome. Brian Hover introduced me to Paul. Okay. So when we were putting Boys Like Girls together, this is like the short story, um, I was like, Martin, uh, like I got the guy. I think I know this. I know the right guy. But he's like, Paul's is like 16 at this time. <laughs> he was 16. Paul comes Bless. in and it's like this <laughs> It. This is this is gonna be awesome, and Paul's like a stud, you know, super good looking dude, super talented. I don't know what happened. I mean, what <laughs> he <laughs> fell off the deep end. Let me tell you. Um, but yeah, so then you know the three of us got in a room, and um, it it really made sense, and we went on the road, and then on our first tour, I found out me and Paul were f-ing cousins. What? How did I not even like? I didn't even know that. No one has well, told me that. Now, now I'm learning yeah, something along yeah. with the rest of you. So yeah, were were you at their wedding? No, no you I weren't. met I met LJ last, literally last October. Okay. okay. So All right. yeah. Okay. So my mother found out um, through my my late grandmother. She just passed away a couple months ago. But she decided she was going to die, so that's fine. Very Boston of her. I, uh, yep. So she's she, like, peace out, everybody. She's like, oh, I know the the D. Giovanni's. That's uh, our part of our family, the D. Felice. I don't, I don't really know the whole <laughs> family tree, and I don't want to go down that road because I'll fuck it up. But <laughs> basically, we found out we're cousins by blood, um, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. I got the shit into the stick uh, as far as the height goes. Paul's like 6'4", you know? You know? It is and what I'm it like is. Five 5'2". I mean... Maybe. I don't know. A diverse uh, boy band. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> exactly. Thank God I'm you sitting need down. You the three. They, the tree. Like, <laughs> well, Mar- Martin and Paul are both like 6'4". Right. Right? And then they got their boots on and everything else. So, like, when we do photo shoots, because I'm... I lied to myself. I, I would tell people I was like 5'8". For the longest time, and then I dipped it down to five seven. I'm not. I, you know, I'm having major days review right now because I think we talked about. I this. did. Oh, yeah, talk- that's why I'm bringing it up. <laughs> we talked about it in the library. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's I. I would have to stand on a box a couple times or reduce photo shoot <laughs> sitting down, <laughs> which is f-ing incredible. Thankfully, right. I was the drummer though, and nobody right. cared enough. Where it was like, okay. Like, uh-huh. I, I could, you know, I knew my spot, which is good. So, um, sitting behind drums is, you know, you can sort of be any size. But I always feel like it's really goofy, though, when the drummer, like the drummer at Tool, I don't know, you know the yeah, band Tool? Yeah, yeah. He's, like, f***ing seven feet tall. That's so aggressive it's to be a drummer. really tall, yeah. I like, I like a happy, like, kind of, maybe, I don't like when they're too tall. It looks weird when they play. Like, if you're, like, between 5'5 five five and, like, 5'9, I feel like that's a good rock and roll yeah. drummer. Yeah. Because the drums still look big, you know? But right. I, I had, like, the biggest drums ever. Why? why? So it's know. just, like, it's your territory, the, the you know? complex. I love it. Yeah. So I love it. At least I'm honest it. with myself in my late 30s. Hey, would you say, though, that's, like, that's a way to make it in this industry is to be honest with I'm yourself? Fucking, I'm as honest Because there's as a come. lot of dishonest... Everybody's BS. fucking lying about everything. <laughs> Bunch of liars. <laughs> and it's like, I'm not trying to sound, you know, skeptic. Like, there, no, no, nobody's out to get you or whatever. But, yeah. like, do you feel like being in this industry, part of it is really knowing yourself and knowing, I mean, knowing what you want? Knowing how to, like, be a, you know, a politician, I think, is probably the smartest thing yeah. um, in this industry. But, I mean, you got to be fucking good. But being a good politician, meaning, like, going out doing the hangs, going to the, especially in Nashville is even more different, but it's about being in the room with the right people and making them your, their, you know, your friends. Yeah. Um, I'm, I don't have a lot of musician friends. Um, I do, but not like some people I know, like that's all they hang out with is musicians. Right. And that's it. I just, 
I don't feel like, and I never felt like this. I never felt like I had a lot of co- in common. Like, I don't want to talk about fucking drum sets. I don't. When people hit me up, I mean, online, <clears throat> and they're like, hey, like, what kind of sticks do you use? And what, I'm like, I'll answer, but it's not, like, something I really, like, I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about playing, and I really enjoy playing, and I really enjoy learning, and I, and I like being with my buddies and being in a band and that camaraderie. But, like, when it comes to, like, the... Like, let's talk about music. Eh, I could fucking yeah. care less. I just don't really like it. I don't even listen. I mean, I love music. Right. But I don't really listen to music in my car. Like, Really? I just... Okay. I'm silence. Sometimes that's good, though. I I'll mean, listen to my mixes of my songs and stuff like that, because I'm a selfish prick. But <laughs> when it comes to, like, being, like, part of, like, a, a group of, like, people that you'd hang out with... I have I just don't have a lot in common with musicians. I feel like I don't. Like we have a commonality in that we both like music and that we might write music, but outside of that I I can't really think of many people that I've been on tour with that I still talk to other than the guys in my band. And a lot of people are different than that. Like I'll have sessions with them and we'll be like, yeah. "Oh, hey, remember when, you know, we went to Hooters and fucking, you know, right. you got 100 wings and and, you know, whatever. But, like, other than that, like, I don't know what, a, like, what do we, t- what do we do? Like, I just want to talk about, like, fucking MMA, which is, like, not even close to music. Yeah. You know? Because that's get, what I like. Or football. No, but or I, like, I get that, though, because, like, I am around a lot of songwriters, musicians, and, like, I get in a sense where I'm in their industry, but I have, I have, a, like, really close friends that are in tech. Yeah. That or they're doctors or they're, yeah. you know, yeah. whatever, dermatologists. And it's like, it's so nice to every once in a while step outside the immediate world that I'm in. Yeah. And, but I feel like the, you know, in, in music specifically, yeah. to be very successful in music, at least from what I've seen, especially in Nashville, you have to be in that f-ing click. And if you're not, yeah. it's just not, it's not going to happen. Like you have to be part of that. You have to be good. But there's guys that are great that you've never heard of because they're not in that clique, you know? Yeah. Um, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. I feel like, you know, like, we, I would get set up with sessions and, you know, I, I, I'm not part of the clique necessarily, but I've had success. And, like, I'd be put in with people that are just, like, starting or, which is fine because you never, you might find You never a, know who they're going to yeah, be. Yeah, a diamond in a rough, but... More often than not, like, I'm showing them what my industry is, which ends up hurting me anyway. So, like, I'm not getting in the room with the people that I, like, should be yeah. in the room with because I'm not necessarily part of that clique, which is is what it is. Like, I could be. I could, you know, but it's just like, I don't know. I just don't do it. I guess it's like the punk rock guy in me <laughs> or something i'm just like i don't know like it's like it's not interesting if it's not interesting i don't want to do it that's how i've always been it's like well you can make a ton of money doing that well it's i mean i no love f-ing having money that's great it's always great to have an extra couple hundred bucks in your pocket or a couple million or whatever but i'm like not that's as soon as my motivation goes there it's just i'm unhappy yeah you know and I was there when I was, like, doing a million sessions in that old house. Because mm-hmm. so I'm like, okay, well, I have this big house. Now I need this brand, you know, big car and, and everything else. And, you know, got to keep up with the Joneses, I guess. I don't know. Um, I guess, uh, yeah. I yeah. don't know where I'm going with this. But I got it. Oh, what I'm, well, my point was is that, like, if, if you, and this is cliche, if you like what you do, then, you know, it's, you'll never work another day in your life. I mean, so it's like, I just do things that I can like, like to do, you know, do I get in all the best sessions? No. Do I go after them? No. And Could I make way the more click money? It's going to change though, is what I believe. The click always eventually changes. Yeah, maybe. So it's just like, yeah. why put the pressure on yourself of having to be like, yeah, I have I've been doing way. less music now than ever. I'm just like my focus has shifted on things that I really enjoy and I feel like because I enjoy them and when I'm passionate about something I'm fucking all in. Yeah. I'm all in and I'm going to be good at it or I'm just going to like maybe maybe it's good to step away from stuff that you've been doing for so long and to, you know, 
sort of like reinvigorate yourself and reinvent yourself because if you're not then you're just going to become boring i think yeah you know maybe or maybe not shoot as high as you would have liked in that specific area yeah yeah Yeah. because we get stagnant you know especially in songwriting i know that like this time off like i've always wanted to do sort of a solo sort of project so i started the thing i was telling you about johnny and the maniac which is like an indie sort of thing and finding my voice in that has been really fun, but it's like, you know, like whenever something comes to me or a melody comes to me, then I'll just like put it in my phone, you know, or I just won't fucking think about music for like a couple <laughs> weeks, but it's all been very organic. And that's what I love about the project is because it's like, man, like I'm thinking about that time that I was like in a fucking bathroom at a bar and I was doing drugs with somebody I didn't know and coming up with a business plan smoking cigarettes, you know, and when I was 22, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, this might make an interesting song somehow. And then, you know, next thing you know, we have a song. Um, and it hasn't been like a forceful thing. Like when you get into a session and it's like, okay, we got to write about specifically maybe... So they sent us a brief and then, uh, you know, like Bon Jovi's looking for their new hit, you know, or <laughs> you no, gotta, I you never gotta, get yeah. those. But if I did, that would be awesome. Then I would try it. But like, like Home Goods is looking for their new fucking right. theme song, you know, and it's like, OK, but it's like a little soul sucking at times. Yes, you can do very well and make a lot of money. And I do love it, but I don't love it as much as I did Probably because the financial gain on it hasn't right. been what it is. So I've just kind of like, you know, I'm just kind of rolling with the punches and seeing where it goes. Well, is there like a rough time frame of when people will get to hear from this new project? It's just for me. It's so. just for you? No, nobody's going to no hear No one's going to hear it ever. Um, <laughs> I, I was supposed to be done with it months ago, but um, there's just like a lot of editing and stuff um, to do uh, as far as like my, uh, my partner, uh, Chris... Yeah, and I he's he's just got some more editing and then some mixing, but we're we're pretty close, yeah. you know. And then I gotta yeah, kind of put it out, but it's like I don't even know how to fucking put music out anymore. Like, what do you do? Like, there's all this other these other platforms that I I still people tell me what fucking TikTok is, and I still don't get it because the same fucking thing as Instagram. I don't fucking know, but I'm supposed to be doing that, and I, like my social media, like I just don't fucking do it. I don't like it. Like, I don't know. But that's what you have to do. Yeah. Apparently you do. Yeah. But you know, TikTok, I like for the voiceovers. That's literally it. But I, I have to space out time being on there. It's a really aggressive do platform. The, do you remember the beginning of TikTok? It, it was, was just it, too. It was called Musical.ly. Uh, oh, yeah. yes. So then, so then do you remember the ads for TikTok after that? Do you remember like, the ads? There was this, there was these like kids, like a girl and a guy, and it was like, they advertise it really weird, like, make a music video with your friend, and there was this little ad that I saw come up a million times, and I was like, what the <laughs> f*** is this? And it was this guy, and he was dressed kind of like a jester, and she was too, but they're on separate, in separate oh, places. Oh, yeah. da 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 and then she would do it, and it just kept popping up. I don't remember why that came up to my head. It was so f***ing annoying. Yeah. Now it's like, it's that's TikTok the thing. Now. That's it's, everything. It's a lot to keep up with for sure. And I was talking actually with somebody about that today about there's also this pressure of like posting on a daily basis and engaging people. Yeah. And it's like, for me, there's only so much output that I can use. So it's like, if I'm going to use that time to be, to put, to, you know, focus on output, I mm. want it to be quality. I don't want it to just be noise. Yeah. 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 That and it's like, you see here my list. <laughs> <laughs> I have retainers and it's my f- 15th time doing braces. Um, no. Third, Invisalign? Is third it Invisalign? Time. Well, I got, I had like headgear. Well, maybe this is my fourth. I had headgear when I was a little kid. Oh, wow. And then my parents, I don't fucking know, so I block it out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> trauma. <laughs> trauma, yeah. So then, oh, it was another thing about not having a lot of money. My parents... Like, braces were, like, 1500 bucks or something like that when we were kids, right? So, yeah, my dad was a dentist, and so he had me. I had to have them in middle school. It was, yeah. 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 So, I had headgear, and my parents would make us 
make me get in the car after work, sitting sit in two hour traffic into Boston and then two hours back to go save. I think it was like literally like three hundred bucks. But I'm like, you are f- are f- stupid. When I look back, I'm like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> like the time. What about the time we spend? And then like going out to eat every time we had to go there, you know. And then, you know. Them get then they get a divorce and then like I still have the shit in my mouth and then my dad's like okay let's get you braces and then we get braces and I'm a fucking senior in high school and I'm like this <laughs> you know I'm like yeah. you know I right. just want to like bring a girl out on a date but I'm too scared because I have like canker sores all over my mouth it's... and fuck <laughs> and uh, peanut butter and jelly in my braces <laughs> and those know? those awful. Um, what were they like th- for floss? Like, there's a special little thing that you had to like stick in between. Yeah, it was just it, it was all bad. Well, it's, so oh, then yeah. I finish my braces, my teeth look great, and I lose my bottom retainers. But I have no money to fucking go get new ones. And my parents are like, "Well, you're you're fucking 18, so you figure it out." So I'm like, "Oh, they look fine." And then eventually, my teeth start to to shift. Not terribly, but I had really bad teeth. I had like three rows of teeth, like a shark. Like, dense, really crazy, dense. I still have baby teeth. Yeah. Well, you know what's crazy is, like, if I don't wear my retainer for, like, a certain amount of time, I'll get a headache from not, like, my teeth still shift. Yeah, they they will constantly shift. Your nose will get bigger and your ears ears will continue to grow. So, I go, uh, I I forget my retainers and then, uh, well, lost it for years and then I'm like man my teeth have moved a lot maybe I should get Invisalign and this is like a year ago yeah so I find a nice new dentist East Nashville family dentistry they're been great shout out no seriously they're I I love my dentist she's awesome um and I'm like yeah I think I want to get Invisalign um so like okay and I'm almost done and then the country shuts down so I have like three more trays left after 17 weeks of doing this perfect. Like, she's like, you're like the best Invisalign. You're like on time. You can do all the shit you're supposed to do. You wear them the right amount of time, you know, and then the country shuts down and I have my last retainer and I need to go get my other ones, but right. they need to do another check and like, you know, to any anything you sort of like unhappy with, um, they'll go back through or whatever. But I couldn't get in there, so then I I'm still with this one retainer. And now these have you ever had Invisalign? I've never had Invisalign. I do have those. So I lost my bottom retainer. Yeah, like I randomly broke it, like a couple months ago, and I went home and they gave me a kind of Invisalign type retainer. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's clear on the bottom, and then I wear the typical, like, wire oh, one on that top. That looks like shit. It looks... You should take a photo <laughs> and post it. You're like, check me out. <laughs> it's so... It could not be more opposite. Look at me. But it's like, this Hi. is what I'm stuck with. So yeah. it's like... Eh. Yeah, I mean, whatever. Yeah. I was almost done, and then country shut down, and I went... Uh, well, I couldn't go to get my final retainers, and then my dog... And my dog ate my homework. Your dog, yeah. yeah. Dogs ate my retainers, so then they sh- started shifting back. I went in. They're like, "Yeah, okay. Well, we got to get your last couple in." Yeah. They put in the whatever that mushy, gushy stuff is. You bite down. They go to get your new retainers. Now, for some reason, when they did that, <laughs> it, what the mold wasn't right, and they were everything no. was like going slower because the mail was slower and everything else. So then I had to do it again. And then that one didn't work. So then I had to do it a third time. No. Right? So now my teeth had really moved. Like, my bottoms just, like, went back to, like, what they were when I started. Like, literally went back. And then they had to get this, like, file. Because there wasn't enough room between the teeth. And, like, file in between my teeth. And I literally was, oh, God, it gives me that the just gives sounds... me the willies. It was f- terrible. But finally we got through it, and I'm on tray number Eight. So okay. I have, yeah. I'm like almost halfway there. So yeah, guys, perfection. don't don't be doing Invisalign until after the country opens. Up. They look straight. Keep it up. Like keep keep it going, guys. They're getting there. Getting there. My neighbor yeah. John Luke, this guy who's a real woodsman, he yeah. uh, he ripped all his teeth out with pliers, 
<laughs> when we were kids and then like got fake teeth. He's like, I'm not, you know, it's like thousand dollars a a tooth or something like that. And he fucking ripped them all out. Why would you? He was, it was fucking insane. He was insane. He was a roofer. Yeah. But a far, like a real farm guy. And my dad was like a city guy. But um, anyway, yeah. So he ripped all his teeth out and got new <laughs> teeth. They look beautiful. I mean, props yeah. to him, but like. It's the best when you see people like get, they're like, oh man, I want to get, what is it, uh, veneers? Veneers, yeah. We, and you can tell which ones are like, leg- like you can just tell good the quality. There's good veneers, and then there's people that they look like the guy from like something about Mary, and they're like, you know. That, or it's like, look like they went I've to seen, a nail I saw, salon. I saw one of those recently, and I was like, with somebody, and I was like, whoa, <laughs> hey. <laughs> Can we talk about the fake grills that people buy? Yeah. To like, what do you think about this? I, I think it's opinion. really kind of foolish, but to each their own. Um, I know Gabby, Gabby and Alyssa. So we threw Gabby's uh, 30th birthday party and Alyssa's like, let's go get grills um, <laughs> to Gabby. And they went and got grills and they showed up and we were like, surprise. And they both have like... <laughs> That's what amazing. You, yeah, I think it's like a, I don't know. I don't really get it. I've tried putting one in. I'm like, this sucks. Like, I don't want to fuck up my teeth anymore. Yeah. Like, what if they don't mold to your teeth? Like, then, I don't know. I get really freaked out. What if it out. gets stuck or yeah. like what? I'm not, yeah. Yeah. Not trying to put an extra in here. No, I don't need any more. No. I get like horse teeth as, as it is, you know? Yeah. 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 So take care of your teeth, guys, is what we're trying to do. This yes. is actually the whole point of this episode. Yes, it's just, absolutely. Yeah, Rush. understand. I never had a cavity up until I was 36. Ooh, props to you. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, f***ing four. It's it's. And random, I'm like, yeah. I f***ing went and br- bought an electric toothbrush because you told me, like, hey, you're getting older, you got to brush your gums better so you don't have, like, the receding gums thing. I had that twice. Yeah. The, it's and I, it's scary, and I yeah. was like, "What's gonna happen? Am I my face gonna fall off?" And I'm like, "Well, it happens with age, and like you know, just wear and tear. And if you're not brushing correctly, and you smoke, or you know, drink a lot of coffee, or all the different, all the things, or eat too much Captain Crunch, and it rips all your shit off. You know, you know, you know, yeah, you know. Um, so yeah, so I bought an electric toothbrush and." Uh, and you're taking care of yourself during and this quarantine. I'm doing all this good stuff. And then it's like, oh, and by the way, it looks like we got four cavities. I was like, and a root canal. <laughs> and I was like, what the f- did I do to deserve this? I went and did everything you said. Yeah. You're on your way. I'm you're, good now. You're, you're I'm good, good now. I'm good. You're great. Yeah. I brush yeah. my teeth like 15 times a day. I'm like a That's good. mad man. Finally, because I never did before. Looked like I brushed my teeth with a Snickers bar. <laughs> but now you're here. But you now up. you've I'm learned. Here. Yes. Um, and you'll be on your way uh, on tour next year. We'll be ready. Have your toothbrushes ready. I think so. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. We'll see. Have We're you ever seen those, there. like, smile? I mean, those, like, those, like, glow, like, and blue light things? Yes. They're awesome. Okay, are they? Because I have not. Oh, it's I have legit. so Glow makes one. I need to do that then. Oh, it's fucking. Because I'll bleach them, but I don't. It hurts. I don't like it. I got ble- I've gotten bleach kits twice, and then I stopped doing it because they, they initially bleach it for you, and I literally almost crashed my car because of the tooth pain. Like, I'm super sensitive to the tooth pain stuff. And uh, my dentist, she uh, she's like, try this. You won't have any. And she's like, you can do it four times a day, and it's just like, holy shit. It's the best thing ever. I'll send you a link. Uh, yeah, I need a link to that because yeah. I'm, I'm trying to get rid of, I feel like there's like a, yeah. I'm, I want to be sponsored by them so bad that I'll post on my Instagram story that I am. Oh my God. You know what? I, I want to know how many people have fake sponsors on Instagram. Well, I do fake sponsors all the time. I'm like That's 90% so off and I'll do like, <laughs> have you seen those things where they're like dancing and stuff yes. like like Rob Gronkowski? I'm like, I'm just going to start doing this and see what happens. Swipe up everybody. Yeah. Free code. Swipe, I have a swipe up, so you never know. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll just take people's credit card information. There's so much going on in the world that I feel like I, if I'm not greedy, could get away with it. Honestly? There's a lot. There's a lot of drama going on in the world. Yeah. yeah. I just f***ing incriminated myself, though. Yeah. Yep. Well, I'm going to end on one last note here. <laughs> sure. What is, I want to know how you're dealing with the, with the noise in the world as a creative. I know you said you're off your phone a lot. Yep. But I think we need to reiterate to the people how 
do you mentally manage with everything going? Because it's it's a different. Choose a side. One is right. One is wrong. I mean, well, I believe that. <sighs> okay, so I believe that both sides are necessary. Yeah. For noise, and we have you have your your you have your liberals and your conservatives, and they both need each other because the liberals more often than not will come up with the idea, mm-hmm. okay? And the conservative will take the idea and they'll be able to go boom, 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 and this is how we do it. Yeah. So I think that we need we need that, but we need to find some sort of balance in between. And we need to stop f-ing going on and posting a bunch of sh- <laughs> like, if you say anything, someone's going to come after you. So maybe just don't say anything. It's good to voice your opinion, but if you don't voice your opinion, you're this or that. So if you're just off of it altogether, maybe that will help. Or be able to have a conversation and not, like, the problem is, like, I think everything is, like, loaded. Yeah. Right? So I post this, and this is, like, a loaded snippet of what, of what, is really going on, so then somebody sees it and they don't read it, right? Yeah. And then you get attacked, and they show 50 examples of why you're wrong and this person's racist or this person isn't racist, and because he's not racist, he is racist, or something like that. It's, right? yeah. It's, right? Yeah. So I feel like people just maybe need to, like, fucking take a fucking walk. Just take a walk and get listen outside. Listen to music, or honestly. Or listen to music, or listen to, you know, just... Step away from it for it, it is it is super important to like know what's going on in the world, but it's really tough to decipher when it's like there's name calling and there's like the 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 um the ideas from each side or like the, it it's just I don't know where I can fit in in it other than like I believe that there's some really good stuff here, there's some really good stuff there. And ultimately, the trajectory trajectory should be to be good. And I think that's yeah. probably, I believe that human beings are good in nature. That's where everybody wants to go. And it's probably, a lot of it's coming from a good place. There's obviously stuff in the bad places on either side and even in the middle. But I would like to see people just kind of like f-ing come together. Um, world peace, baby. But world peace. Yeah. Um, just, this is a great time to fuck explore and and see what's out there and kind of like listen just listen maybe not say anything just kind of listen you know yeah i just talked a ton and you listened you did a great job thank you <laughs> it's my job to listen yeah you know yeah and then respond to qu- i won't ha- i won't have good responses if i don't listen period yeah i talk yeah. a lot so which is helpful for me because then i don't have to like, yeah this is I, I love doing podcasts they're fun well this was super fun to have you on the show yeah, i'll I see you it. next week See you next week. See you next year. Who knows? I mean, um, I gotta say really quickly though, I listened to a bunch of boys like girls songs today. I'm I'm impressed with myself because I remember more words than I thought I would. I don't know any of the words. I was like, how do I? I caught myself say, I was like, how do I remember? Like, I like that you know them, but like when they would they would do like interviews with us sometimes, and they'd be like, no, John really doesn't know the words the songs, and they would like (laughs) quiz me, and I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, I don't pay attention to that you pay attention to the beats no that's what i'm doing yeah like, but i'm like i don't f-ing know what you guys are f-ing whining about in this emo band you know like whatever f- can cry i don't care i just want to play my <laughs> drums i'm just kidding or not cry baby follow suit yeah i love those i guys. love it yeah so go follow john keith on instagram john blg is yeah your... john blg at john blg and then boys like girls and you'll see just a bunch joined. of pictures of me doing martial arts and not <laughs> caring about music <laughs> i love music but not the focus right now it's all about the wood and martial arts and landscaping and la- yeah well i did landscaping <laughs> i have a f-ing, an old uh lawnmower on my ta- uh, a tattoo of an old lawnmower on my arm that says never again because i was a landscaper what? for like 15 years that's amazing yeah always a reminder yep yeah. but now i'm and cut my neighbor's lawn just because he doesn't do a good job. And Call John. Me. He knows. Insane. <laughs> it's going to follow you. Yeah. It's going to follow good. you. Anyway. All right. Well, thanks, John, for being yep. on the show. Thank you. Thank you all for watching. Uh, yeah. Take care and have a great weekend. Hell yeah.
keeps the lady of show. It's the Livio Show. It's the Livio Show.